Bell Hospital Administrator Joseph Verga says is a result of major cash flow issues starting over the summer. Uh, over the summer, um, GMH um, suddenly and unexpectedly uh, lost about 60% of its revenue. First had to do with the Medicare garnishment um, that, the, that the federal government had taken because of the Perry Point debt, which amounted to about uh, mil, a little over about a million dollars a month. And so that happened in July. And uh, in July, uh, further <coughs> compounded, we found out, again, unbeknownst to us, that um, both the Medicaid and, and MIP programs ran out of money. So we were not getting paid by both Medicaid and MIP. This was shocking to all, especially senators who recess session and make the 6 p.m. meeting. Vice Speaker B.J. Cruz. I have made the legislature walk, come, get recess to come to hear what this is because a couple of the senators wanted us to know whether or not there was going to be need for us to include something for the hospital. But this isn't news for officials at Adeloup, who GMH Chief Financial Officer Alan Ulrich says came to the rescue. Two weeks ago, the governor provided $4 million to make August payroll of $2.7 million with the remainder to pay vendor dues. We had basically zero in the bank for our payroll on the 16th. That's how, how close to the bone we are, if you will, how, how dire our financial situation is. Meanwhile, Verga says GMH has been waiting on a legal opinion on whether or not they could refinance the funds provided through Public Law 32-43 relative to expanding the hospital's borrowing ability to pay down outstanding debts. The governor um, uh, uh, expressed um, uh, his chagrin that the federal government would not wait till we uh, got our <coughs> loan to pay our debts. As of this week, GMH received legal opinions stating GMH may float the total $25 million bond for its full amount in order to achieve lower interest rates and savings up to $15 million. They are now working on that RFP, which just began. So we have been waiting and waiting all summer uh, for this process to begin. Uh, of course, during this time, we continue to accumulate interest on these debts. Looking ahead, Senator Chris Duenas expressed his concerns about the hospital's fiscal year 2014 budget. It would be irresponsible for us, I think, right now to pass a budget, mm -hmm. knowing the situation you have. And uh, many senators have been on the record not being in a hurry to pass this budget. So we, we, I, that, that's one of the reasons why many of us rushed here to make sure that we're not making a rushed decision. But Dr. Lazama says lawmakers are missing the point. Part of the concern of the medical staff has been you know, how do we fund the continuous service, the healthcare service that we deliver in this hospital? When we don't have any more money in our budget or any identified source of funding for the next six weeks to the tune of $15 million? $13 million? Among remedies to assist the underfunded hospital, Ulrich notes a proposed increase in fees for 7,000 line items at the hospital, as well as working with the local insurance companies to review and define new terms in addition to garnering sufficient funds for MIP and Medicaid. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Crystal Paco.